All right, you guys, welcome back for another one. And I'm gonna say this with almost 100% certainty. We're about to be real frustrated in this video. As you can see, we got an E350 service van behind me in the shop, and we really have no business working on this thing. Look at the space in the front of the van there. This garage obviously was just supposed to be temporary, a year or two for me to get started with my business. So, you know, this is definitely gonna be a challenge, but I got the wood stove fired up. We're gonna be replacing the intake manifold, knock sensors, and spark plugs on this E350 service van. So, luckily, Luckily, most of the work I'm gonna do from inside the van. Before we get going, I'm just gonna say this is not going to be a step-by-step how-to video. This is just gonna be a vlog I'm gonna take you with on this repair, and hopefully everything goes relatively smoothly. One other thing I wanted to mention real quick, obviously we've had plugs of me working with this company in other videos, hands-free wave function. Hopefully this is gonna make it a lot easier to do this repair. Light is absolutely fantastic. So if you wanna avoid having one of these bad boys hanging out in your mouth like this, while you're trying to fix cars, go down in the description, 10% off your order. Website link and coupon code is down in the description below. That's a good way to start. JB Weld all up on there. That didn't last, so I'll have to fix that. Got a mass airflow sensor connector up on here. And the tab is busted off. That's nice of them. Uh, hold on. So already off to a great start. So really, you guys, the only reason this job sucks is because it's an E350, so the whole motor and everything is pushed back into the dash, essentially, of the van. If this was on a pickup, it'd be a cakewalk. But, you know, even after you get this first part of the intake stuff off, it doesn't look quite as daunting. It's going to be hard to get you in here for a lot of stuff on this video, but if I could get the camera way down in there, I'll try in a second, you can actually see that it's pretty accessible. So next, we're going to drain the coolant, get this upper radiator hose off, then we're going to go into the van and remove the doghouse and kind of show you what's going on. So you can kind of see here, if I move this intake out of the way, the coils, the fuel rail, the plug-ins, you can get all the way back there. It's not as bad as it looks. It's still not going to be fun necessarily, but like I said, we're going to go to the inside. Couldn't really use the lift for this one, guys, so we having fun up in here. Yeah, guys, so we're in this thing now. Um, we're going to take this bracket off of here. They made it a different size, of course. We gotta remove these two nuts up here. We can get this out, then I can take this other vacuum line off the throttle body, swing this whole thing off to the side, and just keep chipping away at getting all this little crap out of the way so we can get at this manifold. You know how I think the conversation went when designing this? More brackets. We need more brackets. Make sure all the bolts are different sizes. Oh. Make sure they're in hard to reach places. Yeah, fuck them. Oh, seriously, fucking brackets. All right, guys, so I just got back from lunch. Also, look at fucking Sammy's face right now. He ain't getting no Whopper. We're back working on the E350 again. And you can see it's good that I'm a little guy because there's not a whole lot of room up there to work. It's kind of deceiving. Everything's going pretty smoothly so far. A few broken brackets here and there. Um, really not that bad. I'm gonna show you the inside once we get the throttle body off because it's really gonna open it up. But um, as far as messes and unfortunate events, we got one little mess. Right down here when I drained the coolant, uh, my pan was a little dirty. That's why you see some oil in there. But I overflowed it a little bit. But I got some kitty litter. Meow. So we stopped it. All right, so if we come on inside here, 
Now that we got the throttle body off, we got a decent amount of room to work. So we're gonna have to take these fuel lines off next. And then we're not out of the woods yet. I got all of the fuel injectors and coils disconnected, but we have to take the coils out. So there's eight more bolts. And then I believe there's 10 or 11 bolts to get this manifold off here. Try to show you guys this here. Um, got these little safety catches we gotta take off first. So get a little stuck, give them a little turn just to get them moving. Oh, there we go. Get that out of the way. Let's go grab our fuel disconnect set. All right, so you probably remember these from last week's video. We just picked these up. I'm gonna try the metal ones first because more testosterone can be applied. Don't know what size we need yet. Um, if none of those metal ones work, I do have the plastic set as well, but we gotta put these in here basically and wiggle these fuel lines out. It's a good idea to bleed off any excess fuel pressure first. Um, I disconnected the gas cap so it won't drip out of the lines afterwards. Good idea to bleed any excess pressure off these, but fuck it, I really don't care. So we're gonna get these out. Update. This thing's got almost 400,000 miles on it and some of the bolts don't like to come apart. So making progress though. All right, we'll show you what we got going on here. It's a good thing I'm not fat. Weasel in here, I still got plenty of room. See my extension back here? We got all the manifold bolts loose. So now we're just spinning them the rest of the way by hand. Get these four in the front and then there's four that we'll get from inside the vehicle process is the same so that one's loose then we're taking our magnet here part's going to be hard for you guys to see but of course this dipstick tube brackets in the way please don't fall thank you now we just gotta go inside the vehicle and repeat that step four more times. All right, so the manifold's loose, but we're not out of the woods yet because the coil tubes are still, you know, tight. So I don't wanna take this whole fuel rail off, really I don't, because I don't wanna risk one of these injector O-rings leaking, which they can do and that would really suck because I'm gonna take it all back apart. So we'll see what happens here. Okay. Whew. This is gonna be fun. Keep all your bolts organized, boys and girls. Oh man, I might need a second set of hands for this part. So now starts the cleaning phase. Get these old gaskets out of here, get these surfaces cleaned up as best we can, then we can reassemble. All right guys, so a little time-lapse action of getting the spark plugs out, cleaning everything up. Um, you saw me stuff those rags down in the valley and that was just to clean up some excess oil. Um, we got the new manifold right here and we went with a Dorman because we couldn't find a Ford one and typically Dorman makes really good parts as far as catalytic converters, manifolds, stuff like this. Stuff that you can't find OEM parts for necessarily anymore or they're outrageously expensive. Like I said, usually quality parts made in the USA, but something about this really pissed me off. I'm gonna flip you around and show you. 
So sitting over here, we got the Ford manifold and we got to swap the coil packs and then fuel rails right here. All this stuff has to get transferred over. You can see the nice inserts for the coil packs right there. And if we look at this Dorman, there is no threaded hole. There's not even threads in there, it's just plastic. Um, instead, they give you these little, very coarse threaded screws. I mean, it looks like a damn drywall screw almost. You know what this is? This is like what Chrysler does on their manifolds and it is a complete pain in the ass. I mean, this is no excuse for this other than just being cheap. So then what you have to do is I'm going around and I'm just starting these with a ratchet so that I actually have some threads before I put the coil packs in. Do better, Dorman. All right, guys, we're fast forwarding a little bit here. This is the best part. You get to figure out where all the hoses went again. Um, obviously, just not a lot of room in here to work, so I slid the intake manifold in here by myself. That was a lot of fun because I didn't want to take these fuel rails off. As I said, I just worried about the placement of the O-ring, so I put the coil packs in, then this over it, and then I had to finesse the entire thing into place. So lots of fun. I'm going to wrap this up. We'll get her started up, take her for a test drive. 